everybody. And I'm Carol, Carol Brown. I'm the curator of the show, the lead curator. And I've been working with two, uh, I don't like to say trainee, because they, they're very professional now. <laughs> two younger curators, Kenneth and Yasmin, who will be talking shortly about their experiences. The exhibition is a YAP2 project. Now, what is YAP2? YAP2 is the second part of YAP1, which happened at the KZNSA in 2002. It was a great project, quite a groundbreaking project actually, which um, was meant to bring forth young artists and curators. And YAP stands for Young Artists Project. And though they had a series of the YAP exhibitions all those 18 years ago, and those artists who took part in it, many of them are now really world famous names. So we're hoping we've got some world famous names coming up this time as well. Mm -hmm. So everybody's got to start somewhere. And that is the challenge, especially in South Africa for young artists. It's very hard to get known when you're young and to know how to approach the market and how to approach curators. So that is the overall, I suppose, um, idea behind YAP. The process was that there was a, a national call out for artists who had to be under the age of 35 and older than 18. <laughs> and they applied and, we, and also there was a call out for two people who would like to take on curating and become part of the project. We selected those and it was late February, I think, that we selected them. We, and the, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the curating of the show without focusing too much on the artists because they, the curators here will be talking a little bit more about the artworks. People often say, what comes first? Is it the artwork or is it the idea? Well, it's very much a synergy between the two. And in, in our case, it was the idea, but the idea still didn't have a theme. So we chose four, art, four artists. And I think when one chooses from a call out like that, you also choose subconsciously artists whose work will fit together, although you have no idea what the ending is going to be. So if that makes sense, one, one is actually choosing and, and in one's mind then starting to build up a little bit of what is the theme. Then the next challenge, because we, we thought we had only three, about, I think, a month to put it all together, which is very little time, and we we're all a bit panicky about the time frame, so we called a quick meeting with the people we had chosen, and um, the meeting was, I think it was the 14th of March, and the 15th of March, COVID hit us all. So a lot of things which we'd already planned in that meeting, we'd drawn up timelines and programs, and we started making plans for where the different artworks were going to be. And then, of course, we couldn't come into the gallery to measure or to look at the colors of the walls or to clean up or to think about anything because we weren't allowed in, it was total lockdown. So that was challenge number one. Um, we then, Zoom came into everybody's lives and we did the, the whole curation was really done through Zoom meetings. So it was the team, which is the three of us, with the four artists and the gallery people, the professional gallery staff as well. We all met and our PR people as well. We met every week and we talked it through. That's, it's, it worked well, but it's never quite as comfortable as face-to-face, -face, as we know. But I think it's ended up being, you know, it's ended up being successful in that way. But again, all the different things one has to take. So I think going back again, to start off the publicity and the work, we had to think of a title for the exhibition. So there were these disparate groups of work and people, and the title we came up with was Four by Four. Why Four by Four? Four artists, four solo shows. But also because it 
the connotation of 4x4 is also very, I think, South African. It's about a big, strong vehicle which takes people maybe to game reserves or over very rough terrain. And, it's able, and we thought, well, that's, that's good because it's challenging people, the exhibitions. And then, of course, the title became very appropriate because the terrain became very rough. And I think it became a very appropriate title, really, because we've all had to adjust to things which we've never done before. Uh, a lot of us, especially in my generation, have had to catch up very quickly on how to use the internet to more effective ways, on how to do different things with it, and we've all had to learn a lot. And it's been, it's been a great learning curve in that way because I, would need, I have personally curated um, exhibitions internationally where we've never actually met each other and we've managed to do it all through internet but that somehow was different from this one because when you're just around the corner from the gallery it, it doesn't seem quite right so it worked though and I think we also had several hiccups due to lockdown mainly I think one of the major ones was the, the two out-of-town artists who we'll talk about shortly Two, one lives in the Eastern Cape and the other one lives in Joburg and the plans had been that they would come down and meet with us to plan things and then they would start sending their work through as they finished it but of course couriers went right out of our lives so there was no ways they could send their works and the idea of sending their works through here to obviously cut costs as well was to do a lot of the um, I suppose prep, prep work in Durban rather than couriering it around so we were going to frame here and we were going to do the photographs and that is the normal process when one does an exhibition you get all that ready. Framers of course weren't allowed to operate so we were really stuck in a very very difficult position but I think what was great for me is everybody pulled together so well that we actually ended up with a great team and a tremendous amount of support. And, I, and that is an important thing because many exhibitions I've curated have ended in real fights. And if I think over the years, people punching each other and people fighting with each other. And, you know, we had extremely difficult circumstances, but we, we're all still friends. And it all worked out very well. But there was also the psychological aspects. People were scared of the future. People were, um, you know, just didn't, didn't want to get too close to anybody else. They were depressed. And so we just had to keep each other going. And what, what is also, when this is not one group exhibition, it's four solo shows which work together, which is quite an unusual format really in a gallery space. So that did present other challenges, which Yasmin and Kenneth would talk a little bit about how they felt about it, is to make the four works speak to each other. And if we look at the themes, the themes actually turned out almost as though we could have asked them to work to these themes because they turned out so appropriate for COVID because Lindani's theme is about his loss of his mother and his growth as an adult and sudden realization of his youth and the problems he's had. Jess talks about her heritage, Jess Botma, who comes from an Afrikaans heritage, um, white Afrikaans heritage in South Africa. Lindani is obviously from an African point of view, and Jess also has very pertinent things to say about how we are brought up, what sort of perceptions people have of us. Upstairs, Vuyo, who we'll see shortly, also is talking about growing up, particularly as a woman in an African Christian context, and she's very text-based and about the struggles in a sense that she's had to fit in. And then um, Kundai is, her installation is all about love. Now those are all issues COVID has made us realize are really important. 
and they're things we need to think about and you know look into where people come from and where we're going to so hopefully our four by four is going to go very far and bring us all along with us so now Yasmin and Kenneth can I ask you to tell us about your experiences and how you enjoyed curating or you didn't enjoy curating <laughs> Uh, no, it was an interesting process because um, we, although we came across with a lot of challenges, but through the process of engaging with each other and familiarizing with uh, new ways of communication, I think we managed to make things all come about. But although it was difficult to work with those artists who are not based here in Devon, because with all these challenges of courier things and communications, some of them are not familiar with the space, they're proposing things which was difficult for us as curators to yeah. manage. But in all, I would say it was, for us it was a learning curve of which it, it gave us more experience of how to approach uh, things and also how to manipulate space and how to overcome those um, challenges in a way of placement of artworks, uh, curatorial decisions that we make because you can plan but once you get to a space things are changing. Yes, and that was a major experience for us where we had to adjust to a new way of doing things and mm. being in this place and being at home the, there was a lot that we had to process and think about and I think also being out of your comfort zone with the whole situation of COVID and relearning and readjusting to the way of living now i think it was it was an interesting experience and there was a lot of growth throughout the process but we got through it as a team we we there was a lot of pushing and pulling and rethinking and analyzing but overall i think we did good and we, we managed to get through it mm. successfully <laughs> when we start curating normally we make a plan of the gallery we have all the artworks which we, we know the sizes of and the scale of the, um, sorry, the plinths and things like that. And we also make a, a model, a small model that we work it all to and we put it all in the model. And then when we get here, we change it all. <laughs> There's something about a space and the height and the feeling of it and the artworks in it that you, you actually cannot do like an architectural um, project and make according to plan. It has to, be, it has to be sensed somehow and understood with the artworks meaning and soul. Uh, this, the, the exhibition has three women artists and one male artist and in, the male artist is Landani and who, his work is very strongly influenced by his mother and his grandmother and his upbringing where he was very withdrawn as a young person and as a child and very self-conscious and he has always made interesting work uh, but suddenly he said he felt a calling or he had one of those light bulb moments where something just came to him and he felt that the importance and that passion and all that he owed the woman in his life as well came through. So we will focus on one of his shortly, but it's just also in terms of placement. These are all paintings and they are all um, people and fairly representational and bright colours. Now that in itself does present challenges to what does one put close to it. We tried a couple of different options. I mean, all the artists had to, we consulted them with everything, but I think each time we'd phone them every week and say, oh, you're going under the mezzanine, no, you're going above the mezzanine, no, you're going here. So it's, it's all about a feel when you get there. And also to try and make the um, mediums that they work in work together because had we had all paintings here, I don't think it would have had the energy and the liveliness which it has got now. And Jess's work is very much of a, um, very much about material and sculpture and three dimension. And it's 
But although it looks big, it's actually quite small. So it's large, it's very long. It's, it's a, had it been perhaps a different type of artwork, it, could, it couldn't have managed to um, hold its own among these very strong, very powerful paintings. But because of the scale being small, but the materials used, which are strong materials, brass, wire, they're very, very powerful materials, that it seems that the two of them, we felt anyway, spoke to each other and they both had a, a, a very strong connection, but their difference is in a sense what made that connection. So now to find, with, and also, Jess's work being, is also very intimate. It's much more, I, I think, it's something you've got to walk up to and look at very closely, and you've got to ponder over it. So that enclosed space of having that, the low ceiling under the mezzanine led one almost into a bedroom or a homely environment. And we felt the two then worked together. There was one type of um, looking at one's environment and heritage through quite a, I suppose, a harsh and a strong material. And the other one is um, in Lindani's where it's, it's much more personal, but it's also bold. So both works were bold, but the scale was different. So that, to us, made it an interesting um, contrast, maybe. And Yasmin, would you like to talk about perhaps one of Jess's works? Yes, so with Jess's work, she's highlights themes of identity, of our history, of our everything but who she is as a person. And in this work, uh, The Inconvenience of Shallow Graves, you'll see that she draws a lot of uh, the objects that she's chosen to place on her sculpture from concentration camps, from South African concentration camps that form part of Jess's history. And you go through and you'll be able to see a lot of objects that she's decided to use on this piece that that we decided to place at this in the space in the gallery. So with Jess's works, we've decided to place her work in the main gallery, as Carol mentioned, because of her sculptures and because of the presence that the sculptures um, portray in the space. And we also found interesting relationships between Lindani's work and Jess's work with the little drawings and the juxtapositioning of the big drawings on in Lindani, the big works in Lindani's space and the little landscapes that Jess has in her space. So also a lot with what Jess's works, they were able to place themselves in the space with the relationships between the art works. For example, her, her drawings and her sculptures there, you, if you go close, you'll notice that there are subtle relationships where they feed off each other and a lot of the curatorial decisions were based on those relationships when it came to Jess's space. So with this biggest art piece which you found here, this art, I mean in this wall, it, we found it more interesting to be allocated in this space since the artist used uh, the material that he made it by himself to honor her mom. So this cloth is made by him with a screen print and he decided to use it to honor her mom, even with the use of um, color in the background, pink. He attempted to symbolize the inner peace. So we found that uh, interesting relationship with the, uh, the artworks of Jessica, where she even used things that are attached to her on that uh, uh, piece of concent uh, concentration camp in South Africa. She even attached uh, his tooth, I mean her tooth, with other material that she found in those camps. So we found that connection in these both artworks. We're now entering Kunda Moyo's installation and um, she, it's, she calls it Figures and it, it's part of a much larger project which she has been working on for a couple of years and we, in the curation process, obviously there were limitations on how one shows videos, one either can make a booth and show them there or show them in their main part with um, other exhibitions, 
But with this one, fortunately, the KZNSA does have a media room. So that was very appropriate and very useful for this particular installation. And the installation is, her work is the result of many different projects which she has done with taking strangers generally and asking them to pose, or to, when I say pose, I mean give their interpretations of how they feel about love and what they think about it. Often they were people that she didn't know. And looking at the various images here, and particularly I think the photographs, is that when one starts to, perhaps for the camera or for anything, when you're representing love, it's always about being close together and that close warmth and intimacy and I'm just going to make a comment here because of the context in which we're living in what and I think it's become important for this way one looks at this artwork as well is how are we going to replace that intimacy how are we going to replace the hand on the shoulder the um, the hug which everybody's got so used to doing with everybody else because we're not allowed anymore to touch each other or to get close so it means that love has to be maybe interpreted in a totally different way and she also did, if one looks at the, so at the images behind, which we'll come to when um, Yasmin and Kenneth are talking a little bit, there also are projects which she has done where she's asked strangers to write little notes or make um, drawings about what love is and some of them are they are very touching and very revealing as well and it's played towards the background of nature and foliage and life around us. Mm. To add on that, since Kundai she works more around um, the idea of human relation and the topic of love uh, in this in this room, what we, we decided to do, she even proposed to have bench where the audience can sit on, and and we decided to split break benches apart to align with um, uh, with um, COVID re re regulations. Uh, of which it also make it more interesting in her work. Like if, if even if you look at the the images, like she's breaking this idea of documenting. We normally see the images of documentaries when where the audience gaze on a camera. But if you're looking at these photographs, they just enjoying themselves. They expressing that love which she's trying to attempt. Like. Because in her work, she is uh, posing a questions of love, and all these um, participants on these uh, photographs are strangers, of which it uh, today difficult to contact with a stranger because of all these um, uh, challenges that we are facing today. Of which it pays more tribute of what we are experiencing today. Uh, we can, we can see that like, even on the video installation, she, uh, how she constructed it, she, she collects the notes that have been uh, that have been done on that box that she created and asked the audience to write the questions of love. So all these uh, pieces of artwork are the things that she, col she collaborated with the various of people space and we decided to situate the Wet exhibition in the mezzanine because we found that the space was more intimate and we thought that was the right setting for the works that she's presented to us and Real Wet's work speaks about black female identity and the experience of black women and black South African women and also, she draws a lot of her inspiration from everyday life experiences and we see that there's a thread throughout her work where she uses 
everyday objects to reflect the the, the relationships of people and how the, the, the experiences of people in ordinary life living in situations. So yes, so there was there was a lot of um, pushing and pulling when it came to the water space and in terms of the placement of different objects and different artworks, but all in all we found that we managed to create this cohesive relationship between the work and the photographs and yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, well you see like as as we mentioned earlier that it's it's difficult in a curatorial decisions. It's difficult to make decisions while you're not in a space and while you don't know the quantity of the work. So what we found so interesting, like to create especially these installations on the floor, which was quite like challenging for us because it was difficult to to push and pull sometimes because we felt like once we remove things we will be losing a meaning of the artwork. But uh, through the discussions that we had, we managed to come up with this uh, lovely setup that we came up with.